Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and in the demo video where the Banesh is going to discuss about the different aspect related to the uh, related to the chromatography system. In the demo what we have chosen, we have chosen the Actapure M as a chromatography system and we have discussed different aspects of the chromatography system in terms of uh, the operation of the machine and as well as how you are getting the different output into the computer and how you can collect the fractions. In addition, the Banesh has also discussed about the different precautions what you have to take while you are performing the chromatography utilizing the Actapure M. And I hope you will enjoy the demo and you will understand the different aspects related to the chromatography system. In this video, we will show you how to operate a PLC instrument and the basic uh, principle laying mechanism of how, uh, separation of the proteins using a PLC. A PLC nothing but fast protein liquid chromatography. We can say it is a uh, derived version of HPLC. Uh, the main difference between HPLC and uh, FPLC is FPLC can only be used for the uh, separation of the proteins and sometimes small molecules also if we have uh, columns available. But in HPLC we can use columns for separation of small molecules. Uh, suppose uh, if you have enantiomers that also can be separated using HPLC. The columns what we will use for uh, HPLC and FPLC also differs. In case of FPLC we will use plastic columns but in case of uh, HPLC columns we will use steel columns. Because the main reason why we are using like this is if you use uh, stainless steel columns in FPLC because of the salts and uh, high concentration of the salts and uh, different uh, materials we are using, it may corrode the steel. So that is why uh, there may be uh, improper uh, separation of the component which we want to separate. So that is why we will use uh, only plastic columns in this one. The separation of the proteins in through FPLC is based on the size and shape of the protein. So if you have like in uh, gel filtration chromatography or size exclusion chromatography, in all those mechanisms like uh, size exclusion gel filtration can be applicable in FPLC also. So it depends on uh, what column you are using. So, if you want to purify uh, histone proteins, you can use nickel NTA column, prepackaged column. Suppose if you if you want to only separate high to low molecular weight proteins, you can use any gel filtration column suitable for your protein. But the principle behind the separation is same. So, these details of like uh, size exclusion or gel filtration, we have shown in previous video. In this video, we will show how this instrument can be operated. We are in our lab. We are using Octavio. This is from GE Health Sciences. So, all the component, whatever we show, it is uh, similar in other instrument or other companies' instruments also. But only the architecture of the instrument changes. So, uh, let's see what are the parts uh, it contains. So this is the instrument, it is connected to uh, a system for observation purpose. So in this system it contains uh, this uh, stationary phase, this is the column, this is the mobile phase that means buffers, this is the area where we will keep all the buffers. So, it starts with the pumps actually. So these two are pumps, this one pump and two pump, these two sets. Whatever buffers are coming from this buffer tray, it will enter here. Okay. 
these pumps whatever the pressure they are getting they can be regulated here this is the pressure monitor this so once yeah, the pressure is monitored it will go to mixer this is the mixer where two different buffers suppose if you are using uh, if you are purifying uh, uh, through nickel nta carbon so in that case you need imidazole in a separate uh, buffer prepared and one is the equilibration buffer in that case uh, if you want to elute that protein particular uh, histagogue protein you have to mix both the buffers a and b for instance so those buffers can be mixed here once the mixing is done it will directly goes to the uh, inlet loop so once it entered into inlet loop it will go to uh, this chamber where it it can be connected to the column so the top portion of the column it will connect here we will show you how to connect the column in uh, uh, in in coming video so after that whatever it comes it will enter here uh, it will enter here and it will come directly into the uv chamber where the eluted component will be detected so starting the instrument uh, there is a power button uh, right side of the instrument you have to just turn on that instrument then you can see a white light is blinking here that means the system just started so after that we will go to uh, this software part for analysis of any illusion we can use uh, this it comes with the instrument it is the unicorn software we use for analysis purpose so just to double click on that one and it will take you to the software so it will give you three pop-up windows one is method editor another one is system control and evaluation classic so this is system editor where you can see chromatograms and uh, the other one is evaluation classic where you can analyze your chromatogram just go for system control the first thing we have to do is uh, connect the instrument so here you can see the connected uh, instrument octapure 25 so just say ok now it will connect the system so this will give uh, different uh, we can change a different uh, commands using this software just to go to manual execute manual so this is the manual instruction software or dialog box where you can change uh, things so here uh, different parameters you can change uh, through this pop-up window uh, like uh, uh, pumps uh, flow path and various parameters such as monitors just to go to pumps so here you can change the system flow so uh, we can keep up to uh, 20 ml uh, if uh, there is no column connected so normal condition you we can keep 5 ml also so you, you just say insert this thing in order to execute it by system now here it is monitors very important thing we have three wavelengths here we can monitor at three different wavelengths so your choice you can give uh, so we are giving 280, 259, 254 just insert and say execute so it started you can see the green path is highlighted and also chromatograms appearing in the chromatogram area so it will give three different uh, chromatograms uh, 
so one corresponding strip blue that is 280 nanometer for tryptophan tyrosine fluorescence second one is 254 nanometer for rna or dna related and third one is 215 for peptide so here we can see the path of the flow uh, how it is connected starting from buffer a so here buffer a and it will go through the pump uh, and uh, mixing through mixer it will go to all the way to waste so here uh, different parameters we can change during running we can change b also if you want to change b you just say start pump b so see we can see highlighted area if you stop the program it will save automatically see you can see uh, some dialog box appears preparing for new run this is software introduction this is these are the buffers we are going to use for this demo uh, the buffers need to be filtered through 0.2 micron filter and also degassed for uh, degassing purpose we will use uh, bath sonicator so it will remove any uh, any uh, hair or a buffers present in the buffers it will remove those things so we are using a most common buffer that is phosphate buffer with having pH 7.4 and this is the uh, milliQ water and this is 20 percentage ethanol. All the buffers were filtered through 0.2 micron uh, filter paper and also degassed. So uh, we have washed already, uh, the system already being washed. So now what we will do? we will connect to the column so here uh, precautions need to be taken while connecting this thing so if you are, if you have any air bubbles through these loops or the uh, or the piping system it will directly enter into column which will destroy it so to prevent that we have to make sure all the loops and pumps got washed thoroughly and then we will connect in running condition. Uh, before connecting the column, uh, we have to remember few points. This column, whatever the beads are there, this is in a 20 percentage ethanol. So, if you directly connect it, already ethanol is there. Whatever the flow rate we are giving, it will give more back pressure. So, the bit between the uh, the distance between the column filter and the beads, a uh, settled beads may increase. So that will reduce efficiency of the column. So what we will do, we have to change these pumps into water. changed into water now we can connect it to the column here also some of the precautions need to be taken if you are using chilled buffers okay uh, suppose you need cold buffer so that means uh, you have to bring those all the components of the system to uh, the temperature which you want to use for your purification Otherwise, if you having a chilled buffer which directly enter into column, that may clog or precipitate some of the uh, uh, salts present in the buffer inside the column. So that will also reduce the efficiency. So this is also need to be uh, taken care uh, while running the FPLC. Before connecting the column, we need to adjust few parameters. So here is the software system flow. I am keeping 0.5 ml per minute since we are going to connect the column. So if the flow rate is more, then the pressure alarm may come. So after that, we have to oh, set the monitors. So this is also I am going to set.
system flow 0.5 insert and now we have to set alarms at what pressure you need to uh, get alarm so i am keeping this point uh, 8 is fine so once it is done you can insert then execute so next here this is the column connecting portion so where here this is this is the upward portion where we have to connect with the column now we are not using column so just we have to go to the column we just click this one column down flow so from top to bottom now you can see highlighted one so you cannot directly connect to the column first you have to fill the buffer or uh, water in this loop so that there is no air bubbles just open the top of uh, upside of the column okay with this buffer itself you just directly connect after connecting you have to take out the uh, lower portion of the column otherwise it may bust also but it is not the case because uh, if is if there is any uh, high pressure you will get alarm so here uh, this is the bottom portion of the alarm uh, you can see the buffer here if you if the buffer is passing through the column so as we can see uh, there is a fill up of water in this thing so once you see complete fill up of the this loop or this knob you can directly insert the lower portion once you see the buffer filling in you just have to connect with the downward portion so now the column is connected to the system and you need not to touch anything everything will be operated on the software so here uh, see once the column is connected you can see there is a change in the uh, different UVs and conduction of the uh, buffer this is uh, this is uh, the red one is the sorry this red one is the per conduction and uh, the green one is the concentration of the and uh, these are three different units now we are washing with the water so after once uh, completely we removed 20% uh, ethanol then we will equilibrate in the uh, buffer so the the main purpose of the equilibration is uh, suppose if you are prepared your protein solution in a suppose say phosphate buffer so you have water you are not equilibrated with the uh, phosphate buffer then you cannot expect good resolution or good separation of the proteins and also the proteins may not be stable in the other condition like in water so they may degrade or they may not be useful if you are uh, uh, interested in the enzymatic reactions so that's why we always do equilibrate with the equilibrate the column with the same buffer which our protein of interest is desired so this will also helps good resolution and uh, keep the intact of the structure of the protein so we are indirectly we are providing similar conditions uh, for the protein so it will behave in a native condition so we completely washed out the ethanol whatever present inside the column now we will equilibrate in the uh, phosphate buffer so as you can see here the conductance is completely uh, comes to zero and uh, we can see the completely flat line flat signal corresponding to uh, uv280 so that means 
there is no ethanol inside the car. In addition to that, we already washed uh, 30 ml of uh, water. So the total column volume uh, inside the column is it is around 25 ml. So we also washed with 5 ml extra. So uh, we can be sure that it is completely removed. Now what we have to do is we have to just pass the things whatever we set already without disturbing anything. So here we can see a pass symbol. You just pass. Then come here and change the speed to buff. So once that is done, we will reset these things to continue mode. So we can see it is again activated. So uh, we have equilibrated the column using the equilibration buffer. So as we can see here, there is a stable line corresponding to UV 280 and uh, there is no uh, other illusion coming out. So with this, we can confirm that uh, uh, we equilibrated the column properly. So it's time to inject the protein solution and analyze it. So for injection purpose, this is the port where we are going to inject the solution, uh, protein solution and this is the loop. Whatever we inject through this uh, injection valve, it will be stored inside this loop. The size of the loop depends on how much protein you want to inject and uh, the column capacity. So we have uh, 1300 HR column also. It is uh, it can it can be uh, used up to uh, you can inject up to one ml. So in this column in this column we cannot inject that much. If you want to inject, we have uh, the company people might also give these kind of loops so this we will, we will connect as shown in here and we will use for the injecting the protein solution so what we will do is we have to set few parameters here so here flow path so injection valve you have to show it inject here so insert this one Okay. Once that is over, we just have to insert the protein solution. And execute the command. So as we can see here, uh, the chromatogram here, uh, the protein is entered. So at uh, uh, 13 ml of retention volume. So if you want to uh, say if you want to uh, identify the protein molecular weight or determine the uh, unknown protein's molecular weight, you have to run this kind of uh, analysis. Like uh, you need to be uh, known that uh, what is the protein molecular weight, known proteins molecular weight so which is available actually I, I mean commercially available so you have to take that protein and uh, just inject based on that you have to uh, construct a calibration curve between log molecular weight and the KAV that is partition coefficient which is calculated based on the uh, elution volume subtracted with wide volume divided by total volume subtracted with the wide volume that will give partition coefficient so whatever you will get you will get a uh, graph straight line and based on that straight line uh, you can get unknown proteins 
molecular way. So that can be discussed in uh, gel uh, size exclusion chromatography. Now we will show you how to analyze the results. So uh, this is the uh, software used for evaluation purpose evaluation classic so you have to go to file open chromatograms so you have to locate where your file is uh, kept just open that one and say ok so here you can you are seeing so many things uh, this one correspond to, to pressure and conductance so you can customize the things like what you want to see in the uh, chromatogram is only uv 2 it so you just uh, keep those things and uh, remove all those things okay and here also it is showing 3it you don't need 3it you want to uh, take up to 65 so you just go and change the uh, y axis so So like, so you can see this is the chromatogram peak is very sharp. So you can also uh, integrate the peaks. So this is UV two IT integration. So just say uh, so it will give the uh, exact. Uh, retention volume of the each and every peak how many peaks are present so here we can see 12.86 this is the major peak what we have so uh, with this uh, you can analyze the results so if you want to calibrate you have to calculate retention volume for all the proteins whichever you are using for calibration and construct the calibration curve be, uh, between partition coefficient and log molecular weight so with this you can uh, identify unknown proteins molecular weight so in this particular FELC demo we showed you how the instrument works what are the different parts and what are the precautions we need to take while running the instrument and how the software works and how to uh, analyze these things so another point uh, we forgot actually this is the fraction collector so while your protein is editing suppose uh, your protein is editing at uh, 12 so started at 12 you want to collect fractions from that time onwards till the end of the edition so what you can do you can use fraction collector also from uh, main window this is the fraction collector it will automatically moves so here it contains the sensor but you need not to touch anything okay so uh, in uh, main system control here fraction collector there is an option for fraction collector how many fractionation you need to be done uh, when you need to stop fractionation and uh, how much feed to uh, fractionation outlet wall all these things you can set there in addition to that uh, you can also set system uh, gradient flow uh, suppose you want to elute uh, a protein with the gradient you don't know at what concentrate at what particular concentration of imidazole if you are using uh, nickel nta column or at what particular concentration the protein higher or lower molecular weight uh, elutes so with this you can uh, just adjust the concentration and length you have to give in uh, suppose 60 minutes so what system will do it will over 60 minute of time it will increase 0 to 50 percentage so you can do this one reverse gradient also so first you will give uh, 15 and uh, time you can keep uh, just uh, uh, suppose 1 minute so from time uh, when you start the system it will st starts with the 50% of the B and reduces to 0 
so uh, all these things will make you familiarize how uh, the system works with the fast protein liquid chromatography so hope uh, these things will help you to achieve your goals in your research thanks for watching now we understand how a fast protein liquid chromatography works so after using the instrument we have to uh, from buffer to water we have to change the valves because if you are directly keeping in the 20 percent ethanol it may the ethanol which are present in the buffer and uh, the proteins or salts present in the column they may get precipitated and clog the column so it is a better practice first you change this uh, buffer system to water then wash thoroughly whatever the salts present inside the column it got eroded then again you change to the uh, uh, 20 percent ethanol for uh, preserving purpose that need to be remembered for uh, a better performance of the system i hope you have enjoyed looking at the demo and you have understood the different operational steps what is required to perform the chromatography you can be able to modulate these steps because it is possible that you may not have the ectapure m in your laboratory you might have some other chromatography system so what i suggest is that you can actually go through with the manual and the overall the steps are going to be the remain same except that the positioning of the buttons and all other minute detail might be different. So with this I would like to conclude our lecture here. Thank you.